G'day guys, welcome back to the Tree Footy YouTube channel. Again, continuing this redraft series. You guys seem to be enjoying it. Frankly, I enjoy it. Uh, it takes a long time to do, but here we are continuing again with 2018. So yesterday I did 2019, uh, a couple of days before that, 2020, then there's 21 and 22. So if you're interested in going back and looking at it, then by all means go and check it out. But today we're going to do the 2018 draft. And honestly, having a look at it, the reputation of this draft is that it's kind of a super draft, which is a term that gets overused a lot. But Honestly, like, you know, I'll, I'm sure I'll have a better answer for this, a, a more refined answer for this once I've done more redrafts. But looking at the top end talent of this draft, it probably is the best one since 2001. But it is still early. You can never really fully assess a draft until until most players have retired from it, to be completely frank. I can't imagine it gets anywhere near 2001. That draft was absolutely insane. But 2018 does stack up and it is outrageously hard to split Certainly the top three, the top five, there's a shade in differences of talent in my opinion. I think the top, let me scroll down here, probably seven to eight players, depending on your own opinion, are all really, really good top-end talents, I would say. It does drop off a little bit. It gets really a subjective you know, past about pick 12, I would say. So as always, I'm expecting some mixed opinions on how I actually go with this. I just think as a disclaimer, it is really subjective. So don't be surprised if I pick a very different list to what you have selected. So if before I crack into it, if you could do me a favor and subscribe to the channel, we're aiming for 24K by the end of the draft. It's a draft that I um, simultaneously I'm looking forward to and just can't wait for it to be over. But uh, yeah, if you could help me get to that goal of 24K, it would really cap off a really productive year for the channel and I'd really appreciate the support, which I already do, but it would be great to get to 24K. So I'm gonna rehash the premise of this particular video. If this is the first one of the series that you happen to be watching. Uh, essentially, I'm gonna redraft the draft. Uh, and it's not strictly a ranking of players on what they've achieved so far, but it's what recruiters, in my opinion, what they would do if they were presented with this draft once again with the same selections. Now, uh, again, another disclaimer, I have taken live trading out of the equation. So it's the selections that clubs had going into the draft. It's harder than you think it is to get that right because certainly with like academy picks as well, with the rules changing, etc., I can't actually see what certain clubs had going into the draft once they've like match bids, etc. So bear with me, I've done my best with the actual draft order, but the actual selection of players will be on a combination of what they've achieved now and what they're likely to achieve in the future. So yeah. All right, enough faffing around. Let's crack into this draft. We know that Carlton had pick one on this fateful day and they took Sam Walsh, which is a completely just justifiable pick. But I didn't take Sam Walsh because this is so damn hard to do. I've had to decide between three players. The player that I ultimately decided is Zach Butters for pick one. He originally went pick 12 to Port Adelaide. Again, if you're picking on potential, like Sam Walsh could easily be the best midfielder of his generation. Like he is an absolute star, battled some injury. I think he started the year with a back injury, came back hard. Did he win player of the finals? I don't know if I'm imagining that. I think he did, but either way, stood up big time in finals. Would be a justifiable pick one, but Zach Butters... You know, to be honest, he has achieved being, in some people's eyes, the best midfielder of the competition. Like, when you look at uh, the coaches' votes, I think he won. Has Sam Walsh actually been at that level of sack butters yet? Probably not. It's just so tough. It's so tough. If you say Sam Walsh pick one, I'd half agree with you. But I, the other half of me, the 51% of me says... Zach Butters for pick one. If it was really redrafted, really we know that Carlton would actually just take Sam Walsh, partially because of loyalty, but he would be a very justifiable pick. So at pick two, I've got the Gold Coast Suns taking Sam Walsh, which uh, is no big surprise. This was originally Jack Lukosius. Sam Walsh, again, I've just talked him up. It's very neck and neck for pick one and two. And to be honest, pick three is also another contender for pick one in Connor Rosie, and that will go to the Gold Coast Suns. They originally took uh, Isaac Rankin with this pick. Just as an aside, I, I, you know, I was messing around with this earlier, thought I was done. It turns out I had forgotten both Taron Thomas and Isaac Rankin that were drafted in this draft, um, so I had to start again. But Connor Rosie could lay claim to having potentially the highest potential out of all of these players, just because of his dynamic nature, his ability to play forward just as well as he can play in the midfield. He's got genuine weapons. But again, probably on what he's achieved so far, I think slightly behind the other two, but it's so line ball. So pick four is now with St. Kilda, and they originally took Max King. 
Now I'll skip ahead a little bit and say that pick five Port Adelaide is Ben King. Now in my head for some reason, I thought that Ben King had actually had Max covered for what he'd achieved at AFL level so far. Um, but I ran a statistical analysis between the two of them on footy wire. They've played almost exactly the same amount of games. Born on the same day, can you believe that? No, but seriously, statistically, they are almost dead even. I think Max just had him covered slightly. And on talent, they're also really hard to split. So I've got Max at pick four and Ben at pick five. So at pick six, we have the Gold Coast Suns. And I've got them bidding on Sydney Swans player in that Nick Blakey. Now, he was originally bid on at pick 10 by GWS, funnily enough. GWS have a bit of a trend, I've noticed, uh, of bidding on particularly Sydney Academy players, but good on them. Someone's got to. But I think Nick Blakey has really established himself as, uh, as a really good player of the competition, a running defender. He obviously runs like a literal lizard. But his running carry, his explosiveness, uh, he's a treasure to watch. God, that uh, sounded a little bit homoerotic. But big fan of Nick Blakey. I think it, it's tough between the next handful of selections, but he's probably my favorite out of those. Um, and just a disclaimer as well, the Sydney's Northern Academy, all the Northern Academies, can match bids in the top 10 or whatever. It's no, There's no restriction placed on them, so hence why Sydney matched the bid here. Gold Coast have pick seven. They take the player they originally took a pick two in Jack Lukosius. So Jack Lukosius, you know, was drafted to keep forward, considered, you know, almost a generational talent. We seem to get one in every single season. They do seem to get better, to be fair. But Jack Lukosius, drafted as a gun keep forward, sort of, you know, established himself as a almost like a rebounding defender, third tall defender, uh, with his great foot skills, really versatile player, gun. Established himself as a forward this year, kicked 39 goals from 22 games. So I think the upside, the raw potential, and the match-winning ability, he won a few games off his own boot this year for Gold Coast. I think they're very happy to take him again at pick seven. At pick eight, we have the Western Bulldogs. They originally took Bailey Smith with this selection, but Isaac Rankin's still on the board, and I think that is my preference. He originally went pick three to the Gold Coast Suns. You know, in his last year at the Gold Coast Suns, we saw him finally sort of hit his potential, or at least show signs of it. He kicked 29 goals from 18 games. He went to the Crows, had an even better year with 36 from 22. And I do think the sky's the limit for Isaac Rankin, specifically as a small forward. I don't think he's ever going to be a gun midfield or anything. But we've seen like Eddie Betts as a small forward, the impact that you can have. Therefore, I'm not too scared on the Bulldogs taking a small forward as early as pick eight. Isaac Rankin would be a great selection. Which leaves Adelaide on the board with pick nine. I think this pick was originally Chase Jones, but Bailey Smith is on the board, and uh, he originally went a couple of picks earlier to the Western Bulldogs, or in fact, one pick earlier. Bailey Smith's you know, output over the last few years has slightly dropped a little bit, but you know, can you put that down to being a little bit out of position? I'm going to pick him on like what his top-level game is, and we know that's outstanding, and particularly in finals. I think back to that Brisbane uh, semi-final back in 2021. That's the sort of level of talent that I think Adelaide will have in mind when they select him at pick nine in this redraft, which puts us at pick 10 with the GWS Giants. Now, they're going to take Taron Thomas. Now, the, the funny thing with this is because Taron Thomas is not a Northern Academies player, he is a next generation academy talent for North Melbourne. Under current rules, it means the GWS can select him and North Melbourne can't match. So it just shows the rules are all over the place with this. But Taron Thomas is a prodigiously talented player. Um, I think I've used this stat a lot, but I'm going to do it now because it justifies my point. But I think in the last month, he was ranked you know, one of the best players in the competition statistically. And I do think that backs up what we see on the eye test, which is raw prodigious talent. So admittedly, he comes with baggage. I wondered whether I should drop him down the order for that. But I just thought, let's keep it about talent. And I think Taron Thomas at this selection makes sense. At pick 11, we have Port Adelaide. This was originally the Zach Butters pick. This time, they're going to take Bobby Hill, who originally went at pick 24 to the GWS Giants. Now, for the most part, he's had a fairly modest career, but we've seen him come into a really strong functioning Collingwood lineup and uh, you know had a terrific year, and particularly that grand final. We're going to all remember that for a little while now. 33 games from 24 goals. It's a pretty good going, but his, his impact in that grand final and his, his ability to, to win his side a big game that I think will really elevate him if this draft was redrafted today. So Bobby Hill to Port Adelaide at pick 11. At pick 12, again, this is a next generation academy bid situation, but because of the rules in the current scheme of things, Collingwood cannot match a bid for Isaac Quayna. So I've got GWS taking him here outright. He is a really strong intercept player and rebounder. Big fan of his. This is, again, where the draft starts to get a little bit more even, but he was the next most player that I preferred. At pick 13, we have the Geelong Football Club. Originally, Jordan Clark ended up at their club from this pick, but they're going to take a, uh, well, I was going to say another Fremantle player, but that's not true anymore. Lockie Schultz, who was originally pick 57 to Fremantle as a mature age player. 
Now, we've just seen him recruited to the best club in the league, and uh, obviously they see him as the best 22 player there, and his stats uh, back that up. 33 goals uh, from 24 games, similar to last year. He's also a very strong tackler inside 50. So I think you get you know what you get with Lockie Shules, which would present uh, as an appealing option in this year's draft. Pick 15 is Adelaide. I've actually got them bidding on a GWS player after I have GWS taking a couple of other players from academies. But I've got Kieran Briggs here. This one is a big bolter. He was originally bid on a pick 34 by West Coast, which was matched by the Giants. Um, we've seen a huge uplift in production from him. He's played 26 games in his career. He played 17 of them this year. And his numbers are actually really impressive. Like from the eye test, I saw him sort of elevate to be a good young ruckman of the competition. But 15 touches a game, 26 hitouts a game, six and a half clearances, as well as four and a half tackles. We have to bear in mind that rucks and tours generally take a little bit longer. I think Kieran Briggs on that sort of output for a guy who's what, 23 now, I think they are, this this draft. Very good numbers. It elevates him to be arguably the best young ruck in the competition, depending on like what position you see Luke Jackson as. As a pure ruck, Kieran Briggs is a very solid option at pick 14, which puts Adelaide back on the board with pick 15. And I've got them taking Bailey Scott, from North Melbourne. This is it's a very even draft here. So from here on, there's a glut of players that I reckon you can mix and match. This is probably where I'll get some criticism. But I like Bailey Scott the most out of those. He went pick 49 to North Melbourne. And I remember he started his career well. I sort of felt like he dropped off the face of the earth for a little while there. But he turned into a pretty handy wingman this year with 22 touches a game and pretty solid output. So a clear best 22 option for North. And I think he would be good value at pick 15 of this draft. Pick 16, Fremantle are on the board. And they take Jarlick Caldwell, who originally went pick 11 to GWS. Again, he's he's a player that I think is he looks more talented than his his numbers would suggest, and I think he's had pretty good impact as like a forward midfielder for Essendon. And we do know that he's missed a lot of football through injury, but I think the upside is there, hence why he's my next favorite selection. But he averaged about 19 touches and half a goal a game. Solid numbers, but uh, I like what I see on the eye test from Jai Caldwell. At pick 17, we have Port Adelaide, and they are going to take Tom Atkins, who originally went pick 11 in the rookie draft. And bear in mind, he was drafted at 23. So in this assumption, we're, we're imagining Port Adelaide is drafting the 23-year-old version of Tom Atkins. He had a really good breakout year in their flag win. He was drafted on the VFL as a uh, as a midfielder, I think, and then I think he became a small forward or a pressure forward for Geelong. Once he was released in the midfield, he well, he became a pretty important clearance midfielder. He doesn't put up massive numbers, but you know I think he gets like five clearances a game. And in Geelong's mix, he turned out to be an pretty important player. So again, like it's even between a lot of these options, but I had Tom Atkins as my next choice. At pick 18, again, a player that statistically it's very hard to split, um, but we have James Rowbottom from the Sydney Swans. He was originally picked 25, and uh, he's, you know, he's a good player. He's a productive inside mid from Sydney. I don't think he's a clear choice to go any earlier than this. He just averages the 18 touches a game, but he is a strong clearance player. And I think he would walk into most teams' sort of best 22 midfield. I could be wrong. I'm shooting off the hip there, but he is a pretty good player, and I think this is about right. Just to clarify on that Adelaide selection, originally Carlton took the pick in the draft because they traded a live trade with Adelaide in this scenario. They took Liam Stocker. In this scenario, Adelaide have the pick and they take Robotom. Anyway, moving on. Next, we have Richmond with pick 19, and uh, we're into the final two selections of the draft now. How exciting. They originally took Riley Collier-Dawkins. Again, in an even pool here, I think the next best option is probably Tom Sparrow from Melbourne, who was drafted at pick 27. And he's a pretty strong-bodied forward midfielder. Doesn't hit the scoreboard a lot. Averages about half a goal a game this year, but 17 touches and three and a half tackles mean he's a pretty good defensive forward as well. And at pick 20, Brisbane round out this draft and they are going to take Jordan Clark. I, I'm denied about this one. He could easily go earlier, but I feel like it's a pretty even talent pool around this range anyway. But yeah, pick 15 is long originally. He's a hard-running and quick wingman now at Fremantle and uh, averaged over the last couple of years about 20 touches a game. So his output is solid. His impact is solid. Again, throw a blanket over a bunch of these. So it's pretty hard going. So to give you a bit of an insight into some of the good players that I left out that I actually wanted to include, which might be the first time that's actually happened where I've been like, oh, they probably should have made it um, because the talent pool is fairly deep. But here's a list of players that I probably had next in line in no particular order. This might be your child, Bailey Williams from West Coast, Xavier Dersma, Curtis Taylor, Connor Ida, James Jordan, Lockie Scholl, Ned McHenry, Justin McInerney, uh, Jordan Butts is another one as well. So to different extents, these players have looked pretty good. Toby Bedford, I, I could go on. There's literally more names on the list. 
But I'll leave it there. It gives you some insight as to how even this draft is after the top 10 or so, I think, or maybe the top 12. But anyway, guys, I welcome your opinions in the comments section below. I, uh, I'm going to be doing a podcast by myself the next video you see on the channel. So if you go to the community tab, I've put up a post asking for questions, both about football, both about um, whatever else. So if you want to uh, contribute to the podcast, that would be fantastic. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video, guys. Thanks again for watching. Catch up.